Ah, finally. My Avengers Endgame Final Battle diorama display is complete. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week I ask myself the same question, and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I did a bit of touch-up to my Shang-Chi and Wen Wu figures. I also recreated their fight scene at the temple. Check that out. Many months ago, I transformed my Infinity War Thor into a makeshift endgame Thor. And I also painted him to make him more movie accurate. I did that right before they announced the official version of Endgame Thor. So let's have a look at the real deal. He looks very good. He looks just like he did in the movie. All the details are there. There's no comparison between this one and the makeshift one. But that doesn't mean I can't make it even better. So it's time for a new segment. Let's, Let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. Disclaimer. I'm approaching this from a visual arts perspective. My intention is not about looking for flaws. These are just toys after all. My goal is to find ways to enhance and elevate what's already there, the same way I would to my own artwork. Let's start with the head. It looks great. Just a bit of the same yellow tone overall. Next, his armor mold is perfect. But everything kinda has the same sheen, making the figure looks oily overall and everything's blending in with each other. I would like to differentiate the textures. And finally, I'm not a big fan of this red. It's too bright. A deeper red would suit the God of Thunder more. That's my analysis. It doesn't mean this figure isn't great. I just wanted to make it even better. So, can I make it? First, I'm going to paint over the pants with black acrylic paint. Acrylic paint dries matte, so it will give off a fabric-like texture when it's dried. I'm also going to do the same to his bracers. Since everything is mostly black, the goal is to create this contrast between the matte and the shiny material. That way, the shiny parts will stand out more. I'm also going to dull down the body armor a little bit too. In the movie, it appears to be a rubberized material. That's why I want to reduce the shine on it. By making the pants, the bracers, and the body armor matte, the scales on his arms and the orby things on his body will pop more. Look at that. Now the orby things catch your eyes right away but the arms are still blending in with the rest of the figure. To fix the arms, I'm going to apply a very thin layer of silver on them. Which I find funny, because I did the opposite to the Infinity War Thor. Those arms were too silver. And since I have the silver paint out already, I'm going to use a very fine brush to add the small lightning-like strokes onto the orby things, because the God of Thunder likes his lightning. This next step is not really necessary. I'm just adding silver to the small buckles on his bracelets. Alright, now it's time to fix the cape. This red is very bright and has a very strong orange hue to it. So it doesn't look like the traditional red fabric you would see on royal figures. I'm going to use a wet brush to slowly dull it down. Oh oops, I think I overdid it. It's darker alright. And finally, the head. It's a very good head sculpt. It looks just like Chris Hemsworth. And it looks exactly like how Thor did in Endgame. The thing I don't love is his hair color. It's just a bit too yellow to me. I'm gonna add some highlights back to his hair. For those who have drawn or painted hair, you know that you can't just use one color on the hair. Hair is usually shiny, especially in shampoo commercials. Oh, what was I talking about? Oh right, highlights. I'm going to add highlight to certain areas to add more dimension to his hair. To balance it out, I'm also going to add some shading to his hair. A rule I have for myself when I'm painting is that I don't trust my brain when I paint. Let me explain. My brain tells me blonde hair is yellow or gold, but in reality, 
when you look at people with blonde hair, you'll see a variety of colors, ranging from pure white to dark brown. That's what I'm attempting to do here. Instead of using a blonde color, I'm trying to replicate what I would see in real life. It's the same idea as using pure white for teeth. It almost never works. Alright, here's some final touches on his beard thing. Okay, here's the painted head. The hair looks more natural and has more depth to it now. It's not just the same yellow overall. Nice. Now let's put the figure back together and have a look. Ta-da! Now the overall figure feels more realistic. His sleeves now look metallic. And his armor isn't oily anymore. The cape also looks more natural and has weight to it. Overall, the features are no longer blending in with each other. His face is now the focal point of the figure instead of the oily body armor. Let's compare him with the makeshift endgame Thor for fun. Oh, okay. There's no contest. The makeshift one has gotta go. <laughs> the other thing I did for my Infinity War Thor figure was that I made a display base with Bifrost markings and some lightning bolts. It made my Infinity War Thor look so good. Check that video out if you want to know how I did it. Now I can finally use it on my real endgame Thor. Let's hope Thor can still stand on it. Ta-da! It worked! It's not endgame Thor without Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. Oh, this is amazing. It's gonna look so good in photos. Photo shoot time. Whoa, I can feel his power. There's weight to this figure. He looks almost real now too. You would think this figure is going to be difficult to pose. But he looks good in almost any poses. Which is interesting, because it's actually easier to pose in Shang-Chi and Infinity War Captain America. Okay, the lightning bolts are actually there to help balance the figure too. <laughs> I'm very satisfied with how this figure turned out. It was a great figure to begin with, but I think the small touches I did made it look more realistic. Now I can't stop filming it. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Comment down below. Give this video a like and share this video. It's time for him to join the rest of his buddies for the endgame battle. Oof. This is what I've envisioned over a year ago. Random note here. This endgame final battle display is one of the main reasons why I started this channel. I just moved and was setting up my display shelves, and I didn't want the Avengers to just stand side by side in my display. So I wanted to make a multi-part diorama, so I can swap in certain figures if needed. I didn't know if I could accomplish it, but if I forced myself to do something every week, at least that way I could tackle one thing at a time. So if you go back and watch my videos, you'll see that I was experimenting as I went. And look at it now. It's finally complete. The exact way I envisioned it. And now I have a cool endgame display. Yay! Anyway, make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more Marvel Legends content. Stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.